What's up guys, this is Professor Pew Pew, and last week I uploaded this little montage on, well, I would like to call this my new Avalonian Fist build, but it's actually not mine and not even new. Uh, this is a very recognizable build for Corrupted Dungeons, I would say it's like the meta way to play Avafist in Corrupted Dungeons, even though I don't actually think Avafist are meta, it's just... Okay, so it's the meta way to play a slightly off-meta weapon, if that makes sense. So the full build is Avalonian Fist, uh, Cultus Cow, Miss Walker Jacket, and for the Miss, we're gonna use Green. Uh, we're gonna use Blue Sprint, and then for Corrupted Dungeons, most people will use Green Sprint just because it's better for Corrupted Dungeons. Uh, but out here in the Miss, there's a lot of uh, chasing and getting chased, right? So running Blue Sprint is better for mana. And also for the chest piece, we're using Miss Walker Jacket, but Assassin Jacket also works, and there's some pros and cons to that that we'll go over in a second. So last week we we uploaded this uh, montage this week we're gonna actually talk about how to play the build and we're gonna talk about some of the pros and cons uh, of this build we're gonna start with the pros and cons <laughs> so Avifis, i think the biggest con against this weapon is they're not the best for dismounting uh, the skills are clunky the animations are long and the abilities are very hard to hit on fast moving targets so mounts are fast moving targets right so if they're mounted it's going to be quite a challenge to actually hit them with anything and if people are playing carefully it's uh, uh it's pretty much impossible for for you to dismount somebody if they're actually playing carefully and also because it's hard to hit your skills on fast moving targets or it's hard to hit your skills on people that have mobility or that uh, have defensives and know what to anticipate um, it's going to be hard to play against experienced players too because they know how to uh, dodge your e's and if you lose your e if you lose the damage portion of your e you're gonna you're gonna lose in damage to a lot of builds as for some of the pros to this build, you have a lot of CC, you have a lot of mobility, uh, you have a lot of utility in your E, you have you know the iframe on your E, or not the iframe, the CC resist on your E, and uh, purge on your E, right? So all of those are good things for the miss. As long as you can actually hit your skills, your, dam your uh, burst damage output is very high, your consistent damage output is not very high, right? Because your E has a long cooldown, and your Qs and autos are not very strong compared to stuff like Great Hammers and Carving Swords. So if you're going to just sit there and brawl with people, a lot of times you will lose. So you do have to play around your cooldowns a little bit. Now there aren't really that many hard counters to this build. Uh, I think the only thing that I've been having trouble fighting against is Great Hammer. Everything else I can handle. Um, so I don't think there are a lot of hard counters for this build, but... There are a lot of fights that I, I would say I don't want to commit to. Like say for example, Chill House. It usually takes a long time to finish a fight against the Chill House, and the longer you draw a fight out, the more likely you are to get ratted. And also personally, the longer I draw a fight out, the more likely I get frustrated and I do something dumb and I lose. Right. So I try to avoid stuff like Chill House, um, but you definitely can kill kiting builds like chill house okay so let's talk about some matchups and break down some fights so first we have a carving sword matchup and right here this is a really lucky engage for us so seeing that we're about to jump in at him he popped inferno shield while we are mid-air right this is actually really good for us because the way our e works is we purge any buffs before we do the damage so the inferno shield was kind of a waste uh, because the damage reduction and the reflection, they both get purged off before our damage actually hits them. So uh, this is a good start. And then after the double E, you follow up with a W. And right now, if we if he didn't burn his Inferno Shield like that, we want to like double Q and then um, and then maybe do some like hit and run. But because he did what he did. Um, it's totally okay now for us to just uh, trade Qs and autos with him, right? So what I'm going to do is drop uh, Cold Scout on him 
And then for the Q, we only use the first part of her Q. So you do a lot more damage with her Q if you only use the first part. But right? it's just like with uh, Battle Axe, you do a lot more damage if you only use the first two hits. Uh, with the uh, Ava Gloves, you do a lot more damage over time if you only use the first hit. Okay, so he doesn't realize that he has Cold Scout on him, and he basically just wrecked his own HP bar. And by the time he realizes he's losing and he needs to run, it's basically too late for him. At this point, all I need to do is make sure I actually execute through the Undead Cape. So what we're going to do is hit that E, and then W, and then E2. Right, so the reason for this is because your E is AoE, and you can hit people with it even when they're in stealth, but your W cannot. Your W is target to use. Right, so... Uh, if we had, let's go back a little bit, if we had used our double E on him right away, you can see at, at this health, he's not going to just die, right? So he will be popped into stealth, and I would not be able to target him with W anymore, right? So uh, just uh, keep in mind, I guess, like when you're finishing people like that that are just above the threshold, uh, the ideal combo is E first, then W, and then second E. All right, next up we have a Deathgiver fight, and okay, so starting off he had three stacks, and I was backing off a little bit to wait for the stacks to fall off, and then I noticed here he's going for these two mobs over here, so I know he's trying to pre-stack, which means all I have to do is eat the two mobs, and I'm guaranteed to hit him. Right, so when you hit them, it kind of messes up his pre-stacking as well because it purges the stacks off. And as long as you can hit the part 1 of your E, the part 2 is guaranteed and the W is guaranteed, right? Uh, so we get a pretty good engage off. He's down to 3 bars already. Now we put Cold Scout on him and we try to land some, uh, land some Qs and Autos. And he noticed that Cold Scout is on him, so he didn't do too much, he just walked it off. Um, as soon as the Cultist Scout ended, I broke off engagement with Boots because I knew he had Merc Jacket still available, so I don't want him to heal back anything at all, right? so I just break off right away. And then he boots the other way, and uh, right now we still have Inferno Shield, but that's not enough to cancel his uh, Merc Jacket if he tries to do it. So. Uh, what we really want right now is either E or D to come back, because either of these two can cancel out his uh, Merc Jacket, right? So right here, he's pre-stacking on mobs again. And that's actually good for us, because it's taking some mob damage. And <laughs> I don't know why he had to do this. He went back to Q the mob. He could have just like kept walking and then Q me, right? Uh, but whatever, he, he Qs the mob, and then... Uh, yeah, and then he's going to E me here. And I tried to re reflect his E with my Inferno Shield, but I think I actually missed the timing. He got it off before I turned it on. Uh, so I don't think he took any reflected damage there. Or maybe he did. I'm not too sure. Uh, it doesn't matter. At this point, we still have our uh, cold discount, and we're just holding our cold, we're just holding our cold discount now for his merc jacket. I'm just gonna put it on him as soon as he uses it. There it is, merc jacket. I put cold discount on him. Now he can't heal, and now we actually have to back off a little bit because I don't want him to proc his uh, undead cape uh, on my uh, cold discount. So we're just gonna walk until our E is back. He's gonna pop his own cape here, but we can guess where they are, and we don't need to see them to. To execute them. Oh, and of course, because our E is a purge, uh, if the E didn't kill him in that undead cave, it would have purged his stealth, right? So we'll be able to W him afterwards if that happened. Okay, so we have another carving sword fight here, and this one is a lot tougher because it's a Miss Walker jacket, and he was very good at dodging my E's. And uh, you just saw him purge my boots there, so now I am in big trouble, and. Um... I do man I do end up losing this first part of the fight, right? So he gets my undead cape, and um, I'll ha I just have to run away for a, a reset now after he pops my undead cape. Okay, there we go. We have to run now, and we never. I'm gonna skip forward a bit um, for this uh, resetting part, but we never actually get a full reset off, and this is where we go back in. So. 
he's been queuing mobs to keep up the movement speed on his Q stacks, right? So he can chase me. And because of this, he is still in combat at this point with the mobs, and he's still taking a little bit of mob damage. Uh, but we are already out of combat, so we're regening right now. And so I thought this would be a good time for us to go back in with the E. And he reads that and uh, dodges my E again. So we started with a health advantage on this one. Now we are at a health disadvantage again. So because I missed the first part of my E, um, he's probably thinking now is the time to go in because you know I'm like I don't have my E up. Um, but I'm gonna I'm just betting here that if I throw my E out of the blue like this he would just walk into it because again like right now he is in the lead right so i'm i'm just betting that he's going to try to capitalize out, off of that uh that nice little dodge on my e and just uh, try to uh, finish me off here so i throw a e backwards and he walks into it and not only did he get hit by the damage he reacted slow with the miss walker right so his uh, miss walker jacket is on cooldown now uh, which means it's it will be a good time for us to go in now to uh, uh, to hit a W and just you know keep him in combat and make sure to capitalize off of that little curveball that we just threw. Okay, so as soon as boots come back, we're gonna charge in. I really should dodge his W here, but I didn't. But it doesn't matter. My W hits harder, and. Um, Right now we just want to walk away again. He has a health potion going, right? So he's confident that he has advantage. And I just missed another dodge there, so uh, that's pretty bad. But it's okay, Our we did buy enough time for our combo to come back, so we can combo them. And he ended up killing himself in the uh, in the undead cape uh, on my uh, Coldest Cow. But if he didn't... Our boots are already back on this at this point, so we probably could have booted and chased him down. Uh, earlier, he used his boots after mine, right? So his boots should be up after mine as well, right? So I should be able to uh, pop my boots quicker. And uh, really, though, back here, I should have dodged that E. And back here, I should have dodged that W. And if I had done that, uh, then this fight would have been a lot less close. Um, but yeah, like this was a whole lot of dodging on his part and not enough on my part. That's why I was so close. All right, so here we have yet another carving sword. We're just bullying carving swords today, but this is my last one though. After this, I promise no more carving swords. All right, so uh, here we start with a normal combo. Oh, he's in A3XC by the way, so I had to OC there to match his IP. And then the reason why I wanted to show this one is because he had a rest spot. So um, his rest spot, I think, actually was a little bit late. I don't think he actually blocked any of the damage from my E. But uh, it does change the way we play afterwards a little bit. So because rest pot's uh, damage reduction does apply to Coldest Cow, right? So normally we do our combo and then we drop Coldest Cow on them. But now, because he has a rest pod, he can probably tank a lot of the damage from Coldest Scout. And he also has a Tenacity Jacket, by the way. So he could just stack Tenacity Jacket with rest pod and just ignore my, uh, my Coldest Scout. So that's why we go into Misform instead of uh, Coldest Scout. And then we just wait for, his uh, wait for his rest pod to go away. And then we put Coldest Scout on and we trade with him. And we, we come out with a pretty big uh, health lead uh, but at this point if I were to just sit there and trade autos and queues with them I probably would still lose what I need to do is buy some time for my uh, for my E and W to come back so I can combo him again and uh, I try to get away as far as possible, but here I have to turn around because I notice if you pop the boots and I don't have any more movement speed buff left, right? So I need to uh, turn around and trade some damage with him because otherwise he would just be hitting me for free, right? So I need to hit him back. And we do manage to buy enough time for our EW to come back. So, okay, so right there... Um, 
We W'd first this time because we I was worried that the tiny bit of damage on my part one of E would just uh, uh, would just pop him into stealth. So I just W'd first, and then because W has a knockback, so we aimed our cursor right here, right? So we can uh, land that knock up and pop him out of stealth. Okay, so so far we have only been looking at melee versus melee matchups. Now we're gonna look at some ranged matchups. So against kiting builds, um, things like Warbows, Battenbows, Frost. Personally, I really like the counter skill. Now against Frost, this is a little harder, but against uh, bows especially, it's a lot easier to use. Oh my lord, that's so much damage. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the least fun build of all, the most annoying thing to fight, the Chill House. So this one really wanted me, uh, usually I try to avoid fighting Chill House just because I get frustrated having to chase them all the time, they're really annoying, right? Uh, I think a lot of other players probably feel the same way, they're just, they're just unpleasant to fight against, so I try to avoid them. But I think with Avoglas, we actually do have a good kit for fighting against them. Uh, so this chill hell, I, I'm if I if I actually channeled through the uh, the portal, I would have just left him. But um, he really wanted a fight, and he dismounted right next to us, and that gives us a opportunity to go in on them because. If we if we both start off at the dismounted position and I try to engage on them, it'll be really difficult. Every time I E, he's just gonna W out of it, right? And then he's just gonna start kiting. But because he dismounted right next to us like this, and uh, my I dismounted first, right? So I'll have my abilities up first, which means he's not gonna be able to dodge this E that I throw, right? So I get a free E off. And then right here, I make a mistake. You'll see that I'm going to put Coldest Cow on him to prevent him from trading with me. But uh, that puts me on a global cooldown, which means I will not be able to dodge his, uh, his E and W combo with my Miss Walker. So here it is. Right, you see I was, on, I was on GCD, so I ended up getting hit by the stun. And now he's going to boot and run away. And I'm just like, okay, you can run away. I'm just going to sit at this portal. And if you're going to fight, you have to come back, right? So this way, I don't have to burn my boots to go chase him. Now, if I had been more committed here, I actually should have just booted right into him right there. Um, but again, I hate Shou Hao, so I try to avoid them, right? So I'm just trying to bait him into me. And it kind of worked, right? So I did land that second ether. Could have been cleaner if I booted into him earlier, but it's what it is. Um, and then here I screw up again with the same mistake. So didn't learn from the first time, right? Put Coldest Cow on him and ended up not being able to dodge his uh, E and W. Um, and then this time, he's not going to get baited like that again, so we end up resetting, and uh, we're just going to skip forward a bit here. Okay, so, okay, he's going to not dismount me here, right? And I am going to have to dismount myself on those mobs, and right here, he walked in this direction, I decided to walk in this direction because I want him to chase into me. Chill house are easier to kill if they have to burn mobility to chase you, right? And the way this guy's been acting, he just really wants my gear, right? So I just walk the other direction and I'm just gonna keep queuing in the other direction until he burns one of his mobilities and then I can turn around. Okay, so here he's going to lose patience and burn mobility, and there it is, I purchased boots off, and uh, now I can fight him. Okay, so this time we don't get caught in a GCD, right, and we're able to just dodge out of his E. And from here on, we are in a big lead now, like we can just one push him from this point. Okay, so as soon as the boots run out, I should be able to just get into range and finish them off. 
Yeah, so I didn't bother landing that either, because I thought if I, uh, if I just spam mobility to get close to him, all I need at this point is to just like land one Q and he'd be dead, right? And yeah, there it is. All right, so that pretty much sums it up for this guide. Now I know the melee section of this guide has been just a whole lot of carving swords and death givers, but really the way we approach all the melee fights are pretty much the same. Uh, we go in with our combo, we chunk their health down, and then we use Miss Walker Jacket and Coldest Cow to kind of make sure that we keep our lead in between our cooldowns, right? So we can get a second burst off and then kill them with a second combo. That pretty much goes for any kind of melee matchup. And when it comes to stuff like uh, Double Bladed Staff, for example, the only thing difference with that matchup is there's more running around. Right, the idea of uh, when they come in with Stalker Jacket, we time it out with Miss Walker. It's the same thing as how we just timed out uh, people's um, Merc jackets, for example, with Miss Walker, or we try to like cancel their uh, uh, their brawling skills with our uh, with our Code Scout. Right, so the idea is the same, uh, but there's just more running around with those builds. So that's why in last week's montage, there's a lot of uh, double bladed staff kills, but in this guide, there's not because. You know, the breakdown would just take too long for those. It's just going to be a whole lot of running around and not really anything new, right? Okay, so that's it for this video. I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to wrap it up now, and if you haven't done so for me already, please like the video, uh, subscribe to the channel, and head over to my Twitch. The link will be in my description below, but just head over to my Twitch and give me a follow there. Alright, much appreciated, and see you guys in the next one.